we learned how to read and write and, and uh, do uh, arithmetic. Uh, we learned instruction on the job. We were given instructions, we're told instructions, we're shown instructions. So why not let's talk about instructions from the Word of God. In the Old Testament, the, the people of Israel were encouraged to instruct their children in the ways of the Lord. In the fact they were told to talk about them before your children, when you get up in the morning, as you go through the day, as you sit down to eat a meal, as you lay down at night, you're constantly to have the, the Lord's Word, His instruction before uh, your children. Someone has said, and I suppose it's a proverb, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for the day. But teach a man how to fish and you will feed him for a lifetime. So we understand the importance and the, and the priority of instruction in our life. Even as adults, we, we never really get too old to learn. And it seems like I'm constantly learning things every day. Sometimes I have to learn them over again, but there's always new things to learn. There's always new things to explore, new things to, to, to acquire in our, in our uh, I guess in our, in our brains and in our minds, things that we may not have known before. Uh, my, my grandfather was a carpenter, and watching him work growing up, it was just a, I mean, it wasn't just sawing a, a board or, or using a, a, a hammer, but there were certain ways that he did those things that uh, made his job more effective and more productive. And the same is true in, in, in your life. I mean, uh, a lot of people can build a fence, but there are only a few who can build it properly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of people can, can uh, do a lot of things, do mechanic work, but sometimes it takes a, uh, some, some instruction in, in, in your job. I remember years ago, I thought I would be a little bit of a mechanic, not a little bit anyway, but, but be a, do a little mechanic work, and I was going to change the brakes on an old Buick we had. And on the back, it had uh, had drums. If you're familiar with, with brakes on car, but it had these drums. So I had it jacked up, both sides jacked up in the back. And I pulled the, the wheel off, and I, I couldn't get the drum off. And I tried and tried. And I'd see people just, just sliding right off. What was the problem? And I worked, and I worked, and I worked, and I called the mechanic. So I said, listen, I can't get through. He said, well, we just beat them off with a hammer. So I go, that doesn't sound right. They were, I tapped and I pulled and I tapped and I pulled. And finally I realized I had the emergency brake set. And you can't, can't do that. But I finally got it off with the brake set. I had a, I was looking at one and put the other on, you know, and I had the brake shoes on. And I said, Gina, come out here and, 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 and step on this on this brake. I'm going to see if these things will work properly. And I had to put the drum back on. So when she stepped on the brake, the shoes just went flying out. Brake fluid went everywhere, you know. And so... I learned the hard way, which if I would have watched the mechanic do it, I probably would have done a better job and certainly taken less time. But so we, we understand we need instruction in every area of life. If you take a new job and you're, you're, you're doing something at your job and it's a, it's a new thing, and so you have to be taught how to do that and how to do it properly to, to save the company money and to be more productive, more effective in the workplace. Well, the same is true with our Christian life. The same is true when it comes to God. We don't just by, you know, existing, learn all there is to know about God. In fact, there are a lot of things that we have to be taught. There are a lot of things that really people have to teach us to, for, us, for us to learn about God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So, so we have to hear the Word of God. We have to let the Holy Spirit convict us concerning the Word of God before we probably can ever be saved. We can never understand what it means to be a sinner and to understand that we, our life is, is contrary to the will and the word of God. So it, instruction is important. So let's look at this right here. Just a quick passage about instruction. First of all, he tells us we see the instructions of a godly father. The, the writer of Proverbs calls this, whoever he's instructing, he calls him my son. So, so he's instructing his son. And certainly that's one of the best places that we can learn is from our parents. Our parents can instruct us in, uh, in, in the things that we need to learn in, uh, concerning life. There was a book several years ago, I can't remember the author, but it was everything I needed to know I learned in kindergarten. So what do we learn in kindergarten? What do we learn at an early age? We learn how to say thank you. We learn how to apologize. We learn how to wait in line. And apparently there are some people who did not learn those things as a child, as we, as we exist in our life today. 
People don't want to wait in line. They don't want to be patient. They don't want to say, I'm sorry. They don't want to say, thank you. You know, and it, it aggravates me when you open the door for someone. You know, just a common courtesy. Open the door and they they don't acknowledge that that you have helped them or have benefited them in some way. And, you know, just a simple thank you would just go a long way. Go a long way. We were in the store the other day and I was had to purchase something and I was I was checking out and uh, I mean the lady charged me like thirty dollars less than what it what it, it cost and I said there's no way that's right oh yeah no way you need to check that we, we have several items and then it's not even one item uh, I'm asked that so she looked at it so certainly it, I was right she said well you know she had made a mistake but did she say thank you did she say come again did she say come back to see us no she just kind of shrugged her shoulders. I could have walked out with probably a hundred extra dollars in my pocket uh, if I would have been dishonest at that point. But but that's, that's the world we live in today. So as a, as a young person, hopefully our parents teach us to say thank you, uh, to wait in line, to, to, to apologize when necessary. And so what Solomon says right here is, but yet the instruction of a godly father, this, this man's teaching his son and because of that, because of that godly teaching and godly instruction, there are years added to this man's life. I'm going to tell you something. Satan has, since the garden, has been trying to destroy the home. You know that. And you've, you've heard that before. And you know that to be true. And you know that he's going to do everything he can to discredit what our parents teach us concerning the ways of God. Someone has said what we, what we have going on today in this cultural Marxism is that we have people trying to erase history and rewrite it so that we have a generation of people who have not been taught by their parents, have not been taught by their, by their grandparents, and they, they don't know God. The Bible talks about in the Old Testament there was a generation that rose up that did not know Joseph did not know the patriarchs and did not know God. And because of this, they went astray. And so it's important that we as parents teach our children at an early age to love and obey the Lord. To listen to Him. And we just don't say a lot of that. I, I was heard a conversation kind of uh, just in, in another room. Was the doctor's office. They were talking about a vacation Bible school. And what, what is the purpose of vacation Bible school? That, that was kind of the conversation they were having. What, what do they do at vacation Bible school, you know? And of course, we know we used to have it here at our church. It's a week-long time when we, uh, kids come in, you know, and we give them Bible lessons, have craft times. And, and one of the ladies who had been in Bible school at one time said, yeah, so I remember my favorite part was the cookies and Kool-Aid. And that, the, the, the snack people were always my favorite at the vacation Bible school also. Father, by the probably the recreation of the Stanley, and then the, then the crafts, and then then the Bible lesson. But hopefully, vacation Bible school is when kids come. They learn about not just how to do crafts and how to play volleyball, but where they learn about the Lord. And so we understand the principle of instructing people in the ways of the Lord, and that's what this father is talking about right here. He said, "Listen," and he talks about my ways and, and what I'm going to teach you. What will it do? It'll add years to your life. And it's based on, the Bible says, this, this instruction of a father, of a godly father, is based upon godly wisdom. The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. And so what parents need today, teachers need today, preachers need today, anybody who's in the area of instruction, we need wisdom from on high. Because we have so many confusing things coming to us today. So many things that will easily lead us astray because we just don't seem to understand and this man is taking his son and says, I'm going to tell you something. You've done that to your children. My dad, he's always said, Dr. Come here, I want to talk to you about something. And I know, know we'd go outside or, 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 or go get the truck, and he would say, I want to talk to you about this. You know, maybe something's going on, or maybe this is what's happened. And I, I don't want to share this with you. Of course, he didn't used to say share. He said, I'm going to tell you what to do. But anyway, I understood. He had a concern for my welfare as a Christian and as a person. And as his son. So, so it's based upon godly wisdom, this instruction of a godly father. 
And also realize that this father, you, you read the, what does the passage say? He said, uh, I, verse 11, I have bled thee in the right path. Too many times parents say, you do what I say and not what I do. But our young people are watching their parents and they grow up many times to be just like them with the same habits, the same things in their own life. And so this, this man said, son, I want you to listen to what I have to say. I want you to follow what I have to say. And I'm going to lead you in how you are to live in the ways of the Lord. Too many parents today send their children to vacation Bible school, send their children to church, or try to tell them what to do based upon God's right and God's wrong, and yet their own life does not reflect that. And so children are certainly watching more than they are listening on many occasions. So the Bible says, instructions of a godly father, one of the things that he does is to lead his children in the ways of right. The second thing I want to talk to you about is that we have a, the idea his instruction is to be heeded. The Bible talks about long life. The Bible talks about listening to what God has to say. And so the priority for us today is the, on, the instruct, on the importance of instruction from God's Word. Now, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you get a, you get a maybe it's a, a, a set of shelves or a, a table or, or some type of appliance. And, you know, it's not assembled. And so you have to assemble it. And some of those instructions, instructions to me are just, they're too complicated. And then I found out I'm reading the one in Portuguese or something. You're reading the wrong one. But even when I read the English, there's sometimes they just, you know, maybe they don't have any diagram. Maybe it's hard to understand. You know, and so so we have trouble sometimes with instruction. And they're, and they're not clear. And so what Solomon's trying to tell us here today is that we need to realize and place an importance and a priority on instruction. Make sure the instruction is correct. We had a teacher in sixth grade. And it's in, in my school, sixth grade is the grade where we started changing classes. I mean, before sixth grade, we stayed. We had a homeroom, and that's where we stayed. Every subject was taught in that one class. But in sixth grade, I guess getting ready for junior high and high school, which is separate schools, but we started switching classes. You go to class for an hour or so, and switch to whether it was English or math or science. We got a science teacher one time, and I don't know what it was. He, I didn't think he was very bright, but I shouldn't say that, I suppose. But but uh, he had had he had had uh, tests for years and years and years. So he would just pull out an old test and and make copies of it and give it to it to the students. Well, he 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 figured somebody must have been cheap. Somebody must have had an old test. So he took the same test, but changed the answers. Put the answers in a different order, like multiple choice. And so everybody failed. We couldn't figure out what's he see. He, he changed up the test, but he didn't he didn't make the answers correlate with the with the with the test questions. And so you know that was a big big fuss about it because all the all the, the, the smarty smarts in the class, which I wasn't one of those, you know, they failed and, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not as bad as I thought I was. But anyway, come to find out I was as bad as I thought I was. Because uh, the test was, was incorrect. The answers were incorrect. The teacher had changed the questions, but not the answers. And so uh, sometimes our instruction, what we get, is, is tainted. It's not, it's not right. And I want you to know, and, and the New Testament talks about this time and time and time again, there are instructors, there are people who come into the church and who teach false teachings. And they teach them as the truth. You see what I'm saying? And so it behooves us as Christians to be familiar with the Word of God so that we can recognize those who might say that. I was talking to somebody here a while back, and they said that uh, we were talking about the subject of, of, of drinking. And I'm, I'm talking about alcohol, not Diet Coke. But, uh, but they said, doesn't the Bible say, uh, drinking be merry? I said, well... Yeah, I suppose, but you know, you think about that. And I mean, you can take some words off and take it out of context, and you know, it could say that. It also says Jesus went out and hanged himself. Does that mean we have to do that? No. And so, but that's what that's what false teachers do. That's what false preachers do. They try they take things out of context, they take words, they try to make it appear that it's okay or God said that, and then they question the very authority of God in this word. So you have to be careful and watch out for that. 
So what, what the psalmist says here is, or what the, what the wise man said here is that, that, that when we talk about instruction, we need to listen to that. Sometimes my mother, my brother and I would be playing and running around and things like that. And she would tell us something and, and then she'd say, hey, come here. Now listen to me. And she said, look at me and listen. Read my lips. What am I saying? She had some specific instruction she wanted to tell me. I mean, she had to get my attention first and, and let me know she was serious about what she was going to tell me. Sometimes God has to do the same thing for us. And when he's speaking to us in his word, it's just like he's doing it. Pay attention. Listen. Take heed. Guard your steps Lord, about what I'm about to tell you. And so as Christians, we should realize that. We need to realize instruction. I mean, God's not speaking just to hear himself talk. He wants us to listen. Because it benefits us. And he also, he says, because of instruction and godly instruction, we can avoid, avoid evil. Now, what, what's something you avoid? Maybe broccoli. What's, well, maybe there's certain areas of certain towns you avoid because you don't want to. You don't want to go there. Uh, some things we avoid, and that's what that's what the wise man says here. He said, "I want you to avoid evil and evil people. Stay away from them because the instruction they give is not good." It's so, it's so ironic today that Christians, even Christians, we are so knowledgeable about the ways of the world. Now God tells us not to be a novice and don't be, don't be hoodwinked in the, about the way. But then, then again, we are so, so knowledgeable in the ways of the world and we know very little about the ways of God. We can, we can, I mean, complete a, a, a secular song. We know every verse, every word, every whatever they do, you know, in, in a song. And when it comes to Christian music, we often have trouble remembering the first line of, of, a, of a popular Christian song. And so we, we think that that's what God wants us like. When we talk about being wise and, and not being, you know, you know, wise as serpents and harmless as dove, it means that we are not with everything in the world. But let me tell you something, that's just not what he's talking about right don't be deceived and don't be tricked in the ways of the world. But then again, as Christians, we are, we are too worldly, too uh, knowledgeable about the world. When Gina first came to the States, there were a lot of things, that, believe it or not, in our culture that she had to, she had to adjust to. It. And similarly, when I went to Costa Rica, there's a lot of ways they do things different down there. And so it's just, it's just I mean, one of the things that she really was appalled at was that high school kids rode around in their cars. To her, that was the biggest waste. I mean, gasoline in the 80s was $5 a gallon in Costa Rica. And I said, Gina, you want to go ride around? We're sure. And so we we had a place in the fair. We called it the drag. You know, you, you go here on Highway 84, then up to 75, turn it to car wash, you go back down to what we call the plaza, you know. And that was that was the drag. We'd ride and ride that. We made stop talk to some friends. And, and uh, she was kind of like, is this, is this what we're doing? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to ride it. Is this I mean, Are we going to ride to No, we just ride around and just burn up gas. <laughs> she thought that was the dumbest thing. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Don't ride the drag. You spent your life in the drag. <laughs> but not. So there's a, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things, and so so we have to learn about those things when we when we start getting into God's word and we start letting Him teach us. And sometimes we have to kind of learn some ways different. Learn some things different. And, uh, and be careful about how and who we learn those things from. So instruction, God says, to, you need to listen to God's instructions. And not just listen, but you need to <laughs> heed those things. He who have ears to hear, let him hear. The idea is not that we hear God's instruction, but we follow through with obedience with God's instruction. Then we see in the end of our passage where instructions certainly have consequences. Home. I run into too many people in their life, the lives of their children, that just would, would make this statement. They just got in with the wrong crowd. And they learned the wrong things.
from the wrong crowd. Because the Bible talks about here the wicked, they, they're not going to rest until they've hurt someone or caused harm to someone. They're not, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be satisfied unless they've done some kind of mischief or evil. And so you you'll run into people who this this is their testament. They they fell out with the wrong crowd. You know, they they just started doing the wrong things. And this was the way, these are the things that they learned. These are the the instructions that they that they learned, you know, and, and, and that's a sad thing. It's a sad thing when 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 people's lives come to that. And so the wise man says, listen, I want you to pay attention to God's word and, and learn something. And learn something. My mom and dad would often ask me coming in from school, where'd you learn anything today? And you know, well, yeah, I learned, you know, the, the uh, Billy Bob's, you know, mom got drunk last night and got arrested. And said, no, no, that's not what they're talking about. Did you learn anything today? Did you learn how to how to do math or, or, or read or, or, or whatever? You know, it's important to go to school. We need to learn. But then what are we learning? The same is true with the Word of God. God has given us His Word. He's, he's given us His complete Word. There's no there's no errors in it. There's, there's no ability for, uh, no possibility that God's Word can be wrong. This is the Word of God. And yet, you know, for most of it, it's just decoration for the coffee table. Or something that will burden to carry back and forth to church. And, uh, and that's a sad thing. That's a sad thing. So, so it, instruction from God is important. It's important to all of us. The Bible tells us we come to know for us to know God and to have a relationship with Him. We have we have to to follow God's instruction for salvation. I mean, He tells us all we do after we be saved is we confess our sins and believe in our heart that God had raised Jesus from the dead, and we can be saved. That's what God's word talking. That's the instruction. You know, there's there's a right way and a wrong way uh, that people go through. There's only one way to salvation. So if you're not trusting Christ, confessing your sins, repenting of those things, and depending on Him, then you're not saved. That is the only way. Years ago, I worked at the feast, or we my boss had a, I guess it would be called a five eighth ton pickup, kind of a heavy hat they call it. It was a Ford pickup, about 78 miles, something like that, and uh, had some big wide tires on the back of it. And uh, he said, Robert, you take the truck around there, I want you to put me about, about a half a ton, a thousand pounds of shell corn in the sack, and bring it back around, unload it, and he'd, he'd give me about three or four tons of stuff. In the car. So I pulled around and with nothing to bed that pickup, it's a long bed pickup. I said, you know, I believe I could put more than a thousand pounds. All I had to do was go around the store. I said, so I put a ton and a half on it. Or was it put 3,000 pounds on a ton and a half. I had it stacked in there good way. It wasn't no problem. You know, it wasn't going to fall off because I wasn't going down the highway. And so I come around the store, and every little bump, it just, it'd make a weird sound, you know. Well, I figured it's just this. Just, so I pulled up and backed up. And my boss come out. He said, Robert, come here. I'll show you something. He said, look at those back tires. And the, the cleats on those big black big tires had been cut off. Because it was sitting down on like on the fender and on the wheel well. And he said, Robert, there's a reason I tell you what I tell you. And so, yeah, okay, I, I learned it the hard way. And so he didn't he didn't fuss at me too much. But I'm just saying, sometimes when we don't listen to instruction, and we don't have to have an explanation from the Lord. When we don't listen to instruction and be obedient to those instructions, sometimes we cause more damage than we have. And the same is true with the Lord and with His Word. When we try to change things up and do it differently, you know, all, there's always somebody looking for a loop, always somebody looking for an, an alternate way. And, and, and you may be a person like that. You know, there, there's one way to do it, this has been given to us, but you think, I know a better way. But when it comes to God, there's no better way. There's no other way. Than Jesus Christ. So, my friend, if you're trying to get to heaven or or have eternal life uh, any other way than just trusting the Lord Jesus, you're not going to make it. That's why God says, "Listen, pay attention, and be obedient to what He says about salvation." And I'll tell you something else. As far as the Christian life goes, if you want a life that is productive, if you want a life that it has purpose, if you want a life that has meaning and is effective in such a sinful and dark world. That you make a decision right now to follow Christ. 
and listen to him. There's a lot of people who, who give you advice. There's a lot of people who think they know what to do and how to do it. But then they're wrong because they lead us in the wrong path. So this wise man told his son, you listen to what I'm telling you, you listen to my sayings, you base your, your, your instruction on wisdom and, and, and good knowledge and, and, and godly knowledge, and you'll go far and you'll live long. You'll have a productive Christian life. There's a lot of people today who just, they, they've blown it. They, they've wrecked their life because they listened to false instruction or the wrong instruction. And uh, I think this, you know, in the end they say, well, you know, this is what happened. And I see where this happened. And I see where I went astray, but I was too foolish to pay attention and listen to the Lord and correct my mistakes. And this is where it's, it's, where it's got me. So I'll tell you what. Failing to listen and refusing to listen has consequences. It has consequences. You ever had an animal that was out of control and never been trained? When I was in the high school, there was a, a kid in my class, a little younger than me, but he was in our, in our high school. And he raised a, a 4-H club cat. And uh, he never worked with that cat. He never walked it. He never caught or broke it. He never led it. He never brushed it. You know what I'm saying? He just had it in a, in a pen. He would feed it, water it, and, uh, and that's about it. And on the day of the, the show, he brought his calf up there, and nobody could could put a halt on it. Nobody could leave it. He kicked the gate, hit some guy in the head, busted his head open. He was just uncontrolled. He got loose, running down the highway, you know, and just just out of control because he had, the calf had no teaching, no instruction, no learning about halters and being led and all the gentleness around loud noises, all these things. There are a lot of Christians who are like that. They're just out of control. They, they haven't been taught. They haven't been. They haven't learned. They haven't listened to the Lord. And so when, when we need them, when it comes time to be a part of something that's good, nobody can do anything with them. <clears throat> nobody can tell them anything. Nobody can teach them anything. They refuse. And then it's too late. It's too late. So I think God would tell us today to pay attention what he has for us. Pay attention to what his word says, especially in the area of Christianity and especially in the area of salvation because there's only one way to God and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And you, can, you can listen to what others say. They'll tell you there's other ways. And they'll claim to have proof. But you know the real proof comes from the word of God and on the day we meet the Lord. And so the Bible says that one man wants to die and after this, the judgment. So we face it. And I tell you what, for every Christian, the judgment we attend is the judgment seat of Christ, where all the awards and all the, the uh, things are given out to those who are faithful to Him. So that's the judgment you want to be in. Amen. And for every Christian, every born again believer, that's what we face the day we die. All right? So I ask you today, think about this. God is speaking to your heart. The Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. And perhaps convicting you, counseling you, comforting you, and what you need to do. And if you are one of those people, sometimes like I am, you have to be, you just, you know, sometimes have to be really, really made to pay attention. And please hear me today. Just follow God's word. Be obedient and let that instruction be your instruction. If it doesn't come from the Lord, we have no business listening to it. Amen. If it doesn't come from His word and the power of Christ, we have no business listening paying attention and making that part of the standard that we follow. So pray with me now and I ask you that the Lord speak to your heart. Father, we come to you now and we thank you for this time together. And Lord, as we ponder this, this message today on instruction, please God, help us to be faithful, to be attentive, to be obedient to what you would have us to do and what you tell us. Dear God, I know that there's so many uh, voices speaking to us today, so many opinions and, and uh influence is coming at us from all directions and I pray right now that we would focus on your word and what you would have us to do. And God, I especially pray for anyone here who never accepted you as their personal Savior. We know that you promised us who's ever called upon you can be saved. And we pray they would heed that and, and, and make that their life today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus. We pray these things in his name and for his sake.